Did Paul really see Jesus on the road to Damascus? Or does his testimony actually give us good reason to doubt? One of the many things that led me to question the historicity of the resurrection was the fact that in 1 Corinthians 15, one of the most important passages on the subject, Paul includes his own conversion experience as a genuine appearance of the risen Jesus, right next to the appearances to Peter, James, and the other apostles. This is another one of those points that Christian apologists rarely talk about, and when they do, they usually play it down, and for good reason, because it calls into question the fundamental nature of the early appearance traditions. Before getting into that, though, it's worth noting why this issue is so important to the wider question of whether or not Jesus rose from the dead. It might seem strange, but in terms of historical credibility, Paul is actually our most important witness to the resurrection. Because even though he didn't join the early Christian movement until several years after it began, Paul is not only our earliest source for the appearances of the risen Jesus, but also our only incontestable first-hand eyewitness to one of those appearances. The other accounts we have in the Gospels were all written decades later, and despite the stubborn refusal of some evangelical scholars to admit it, we ultimately don't know how many stages of transmission and redaction they went through before they reached their final written form. Now, that in itself is astounding, and seldom appreciated by apologists who love to talk about how amazing the evidence for the resurrection is, but that's not the thing that most troubled me when I first started looking into this. The thing that really troubled me was the way the New Testament describes Paul's experience of the risen Jesus. It's the ontology of that experience that really throws a wrench into the case for the resurrection. You see, if all we had was 1 Corinthians 15 and the resurrection narratives in Matthew, Luke, and John, we would be totally justified in assuming that the risen Jesus appeared to Paul after the resurrection just like he appeared to the other apostles in the Gospels. That is, physically. Paul places his experience right alongside all the others, and he clearly thought that that gave him the same apostolic authority it gave them. And all of this seems to suggest that Paul believed he had truly seen the risen Jesus, not in a merely symbolic or visionary sense, like in the books of Daniel or Revelation, but in a normal, this-worldly sense, just like you can see any living person. Of course, 1 Corinthians 15 is notoriously sparse in its details. Paul doesn't actually describe the nature or content of any of the resurrection appearances there. But if Paul says Jesus appeared to him, just like he appeared to the other apostles, well, we should just take his word for it, right? But that's not all we have. In fact, the most detailed account of Paul's conversion experience that we have comes not from Paul himself, but from Luke in the book of Acts. And according to Acts 26, Paul's pivotal experience on the road to Damascus was not a corporeal, this-worldly event, but was in fact a heavenly vision. In that passage, Paul is relaying the story of his conversion before Herod Agrippa, and after telling of the blinding light and how he fell to the ground and heard a voice speak to him, he ends by saying that he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Now, we could just say that this reflects a difference between Paul's understanding of his experience and Luke's understanding of his experience. This is what N.T. Wright does in chapter 8 of his book, The Resurrection of the Son of God. Of course, this then puts Wright in the awkward position of seeming to discount Luke as a reliable narrator, which he then has to backtrack because the reliability of Luke Acts is obviously pretty important to the overall case for the resurrection. But then here's the thing. The problem isn't just with Acts, because even Paul himself, when speaking of his conversion experience outside of 1 Corinthians 15, seems to use language more appropriate to a vision than to a physical appearance. In Galatians 1, he describes his conversion experience as a revelation of Jesus Christ, using the same language that he uses throughout his letters to describe non-bodily visions. It's the same word he uses in 2 Corinthians 12 to describe his experience of being caught up to the third heaven. And in that case, he says he doesn't know whether it took place in the body or out of the body. And in Galatians 1.16, he says that this pivotal revelation took place in him, not to him. James Dunn, in his commentary on Galatians, argues that by saying the revelation took place in him, Paul shows an awareness of the subjectivity of his experience. 
even though he regarded its content to be a reliable message from heaven. As Dunn says, here he describes it as an act of revelation, as an unveiling of the heavenly reality which is Christ as God's Son raised from the dead. This ties in with the records in Acts of Paul seeing the exalted Christ as a heavenly vision. That there was an auditory as well as a visual identification of the exalted Christ is not excluded by what Paul says here. At the same time, he says, in me, which presumably indicates Paul's awareness of the subjectivity of such a vision, however objective the reality thus seen. In other words, when we put all the relevant texts on the table, we have very little reason for thinking that Paul's conversion experience was a physical appearance of the risen Jesus, like the ones described in the resurrection narratives of Matthew, Luke, and John, which were all composed decades later. Paul places his experience on par with the experiences of the other apostles, but the only actual depictions we have of that experience are completely different, and let's face it, much less compelling than the ones we find about the other apostles later on. And this is a huge problem, because as soon as we pull at this thread, it threatens to unravel the whole cloth of the case for the resurrection. Because if the fundamental nature of Paul's experience is called into question, then the fundamental nature of the other appearances Paul mentions are called into question with it. As the 19th century German scholar David Friedrich Strauss observed in his monumental work The Life of Jesus Critically Examined, when Paul places the Christophany which occurred to himself in the same series with the appearances of Jesus in the days after his resurrection, this authorizes us, so far as nothing else stands in the way of such an inference, to conclude that, for all the apostle knew, those earlier appearances were of the same nature with the one experienced by himself. Critical scholars have been making this point for over 150 years, and I have yet to find an answer from evangelicals that isn't just special pleading especially considering that Paul is our earliest source for these traditions, and that his experience is the only incontestable first-hand eyewitness testimony that we have, what historical basis is there for thinking that the experiences of the other apostles weren't similar in character to his? So you tell me, is Paul's conversion experience a compelling reason to believe, or does it actually give us good reason to doubt?